There's the lamina sensor, just there, covered in WD-40 because I can't get it out, it looks a bit rusty. Um, and the lead I've traced back through. And let's see if I can see where it goes. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but right back a ways through there is the plug. Just up ahead of my finger. Um, so that'll probably be easier to unplug that under the bonnet, I guess. So once I get that out, let the WD-40 hopefully do its stuff. See how we get on. See what the result is, if any. Um, catch you in a bit. Just a little note on safety. So obviously I needed to get under this side of the car. So what I've done is jacked it up on the middle jacking point. Um, put two axle stands in. I've also put bricks under the wheels and I've also left the jack in there under tension because this is a pretty low car and believe me if this came off it would uh, chop me in half pretty much so I wasn't hugely keen on that so I've been as safe as I can given the far from ideal conditions in which we find ourselves working so I would recommend safety first to you. So I've done two things which might be useful to you. I've come the other side, so I've now got my legs sticking out under the passenger side door, so my head is shoved in um, from the passenger side. My legs are hanging out under the passenger side door, and you get a much better look at it. And I've also opened the bonnet, which has clearly thrown away the lights into it. Now, the plug can easily be unclipped under the bonnet, which I'll show you in a minute. The major problem I've got at the moment is trying to free it off. Um, so my WD-40 is packed up, my spray. Um, so I'm struggling, but I'm going to keep at it. Hopefully we'll get at it uh, somehow. So <clears throat> we've got seriously rusted on land sensor, which is causing us some problems. Um, clearly being out into the elements under the car doesn't make for easy removal of the old lambda sensors. Now, a guru friend of mine uh, recommended mixing up equal measures of these two fellas. So now polish remover. It's acetone. Basically, it's acetone and water and automatic transmission fluid, which God knows what that is. But it's clearly not very good for you. I wouldn't recommend drinking it. So apparently you mix up equal measures of those 50-50 um, mix, which I'm gonna decant into a little spray bottle. Uh, mix those up so they emulsify together and then spray it on the offending item. And apparently that, if that doesn't do the trick, then we need a new uh, front pipe um, on the car. So let's give that a try, see how we go. So here's my lovely mixture. It's not glass window cleaner. It's just something to do the bottle. I had to hand. Automatic transmission fluid is the red ready fluid. So that mixes up there. Give it quite a nice little color. So now all that remains is to get that sprayed on the lambda sensor. Give it some time to work its magic and see if that does the trick or not. So all with the lambda sensor continues. So I've had a chance to put the gloop on it, the magic gloop, uh, for a couple of days. I'm gonna put some more on now. Uh, and then we're gonna to go to, uh, to war on it again and see if that's done the trick. If not, then I think it's a new front pipe, um, which I wanna avoid. So anyway, stand by, I'll let you know how it goes.
So, no prizes for guessing which is the new one. That's the one on the right. So they look, I mean, they're diff clearly they're different. Um, but I'm not too worried about that as long as the thread is the right size. You know, hard to tell really. But anyway, the best way to tell, that plug's the same, so that's all right. I'll show you that in a second. Best way to tell is obviously get under the car and see if it goes in. So focus. Here we are. Easy enough to get to down the back of the battery. It sort of comes straight out of the battery. Look, I can actually pull it through here. Um, so that unplugs here. So all you do is pull that little red thing out, which locates it, um, and that releases it. And actually, I'm going to go and check. Get the other one and just check whether it's the right one before I get too excited. Bear with. Where the plug goes in. So that's stage one. Stage two is underneath. So let's go and see how I get on with that. Now I've never had any doubt that it would fit. He lied. Thank God for that. Nice new shiny one in there. What I have found, I've unplugged it again because you need the wires not twisted up. So you need to let them find their um, happy place, as it were, and then plug it in thereafter. Now the other thing I would say is I need to really to get that side of that bar. I think it's quite hard to do this one on you. Anyway, I'll get the idea. And also, I don't know if you can see or not, because my can't tell me this way. There's a little clip up there, see where my finger is. So this uh, wire needs to locate in there. But I can't do it with one hand, so I'll have to put you down, folks, and you'll take my word for it. I've clipped it in like a good person. And I'm obviously going to tighten the sensor up as well in a minute. But just absolutely delighted that it's in, because literally three hours, I'd say, this morning trying to get that out, and it's not the first time I've tried to get it out either. So let's hope it does the bloody trick now. Right, we're all done, we're all plugged in, all tightened up. However, somebody told me, um, and I don't know whether this is true or not, please let me know if you have a view, is that in order to recognise those new parts and re sort of reset the ECU to accept them, you need to disconnect the battery for about an hour. Uh, and then in theory, it relearns. It relearns uh, its tricks when you reconnect it and turn it back on. What I have learned is already, because I've tried this with the coolant sensor, you need to reconnect it with the ignition in the um, on position to stop the silly nonsense with the alarm and the hazard lights. However, what you then need to do is switch the ignition off and then turn it on fully because what it will do, if you turn it on from that sort of second position, once you've reconnected the battery, it hasn't, it hasn't sort of registered that it's restarted. So you need to put the key in the second position, i.e. the one just before it starts, reconnect the battery, which sorts out the indicators and all that nonsense then turn the ignition off, fully off, and then turn it on again, and that should do the trick. So all that's left to do is finish up some other little spray jobs I'm doing, and then take it for a run and see if it's done the trick. So, stand by. <laughs> 